Okay, Matt Barry, you are 40 years of age. You're the chief executive of Freelancer, a company you started in 2009, which now has a market cap of over $700 million. You've spent your whole life working in ICT and you've founded and sold other businesses beforehand. You've had been hugely successful. So why? With your example of success and excitement and innovation in Australia, why are fewer and fewer Australian kids doing ICT subjects at university? Well, I think every Australian school kid wants to go out there and you know, build self-driving cars and work on mobile phone apps or go work at Facebook or you know, get into the technology industry because you know, it's all about creating the future and it's, you know, it's so exciting and you get to you know, change the world around you. The problem is that school kids can't really connect the dots between what they learn in, in high school and how they actually get into a career in technology or go about actually starting their own technology business, right? I think that the curriculum hasn't really changed in, in, in many, many years, and it's, it's still back in the, you know, the you know, 1950s to a certain extent. And in particular, there's no exposure to really what the career paths are from you know, when they're in year 10, which is a very, very critical year um, when students make up their mind what they're doing for the HSC, of how they actually get from high school to actually that particular industry. Now, this is a big problem, isn't it? The, the number of ICT graduates mm -hmm. from Australian universities has declined by, what, 60%? It's about 60% the in the last decade, and this is in the middle of the biggest technology boom in mankind's history. Well, this is a total market failure, isn't it? It's absurd. I, th I, think, it, I think it's a national imperative to change this. Okay, so, so three things we can do about it to change that. What would they be? Well, I think, I, I mean, if I was in charge, I would be thinking about changing the curriculum. Um, the, I think the curriculum has to be delivered online, however, because I think that it, it, it's, it takes a bit of time to actually change the system and retrain the teachers and so forth. Um, but what the great thing is, we do have some great educators in technology, such as you know, James Curran, who runs the National Computer Science Summer School, who could be part of, part of this. Um, I would develop an education, a very, very simple, just educational um, uh, video I would play at careers fairs or before careers fairs so actually kids knew what engineering was because you know, when I went through high school I thought engineering had something to do with trains and when I went back to my careers fair at my old school 20 years later last year I, you know, the kids still thought it had to do something to do with trains. So I'd talk about you know, the technology industry and how you get there and, and so forth. And, um, you know, I would, I would, you know, I mean, I think they're really the, the, the two top things for me. I, I have to struggle to think of a third at this point. But I really do think it's a, it's a, it's a big thing. It's science, technology, engineering, mathematics. It's a fantastic and wonderful career path. And I just think we have to sell it a little bit better. Just, just finally, just to talk a little bit about freelancer.com. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you describe, you've described it as part of the evolution of the internet. Yep. Just, can you just expand on that? Well, fundamentally, we're just eBay for jobs. Right, so um, we're just a global marketplace where you can get any job you can possibly think of that can be done by computer online, done. So it doesn't matter whether it's a build me a website or design for me a logo or something in astrophysics or genetic engineering or biotechnology or manufacturing. You can post a job, people from all around the world will bid on that job and you can get it performed for you. It, edit my novel. Yeah, edit your novel, yeah. do, do the cover for the novel, yeah. uh, you find your publisher or, yeah. or help you publish it online or, yeah. or whatever it may be. Um, we've got over 10 million users on the site, with, you know, growing by about 20,000 a day, and about 5.4 million projects have been posted. And, and really what it is, is we're a global marketplace for services, and, and if you can think about how the internet has evolved over the last 20 years, so back about 1995 it went mainstream in the US, UK, Australia, Canada, and other Western economies. People went online, being very consumer-driven economies, they went online to buy things, and this led to the emergence of global marketplaces for products, first-hand products being Amazon, second-hand products being eBay, and then payment systems like PayPal. Fast forward 15, 20 years later, the internet hits you know, Indonesia, hits India, hits Pakistan, you know, Philippines and so forth. People go online, they don't have any money to buy anything, uh, so they can't you know, buy something off eBay. They don't have any money, they don't have any possessions to potentially sell on a marketplace like eBay, but they can sell their services or sell their labour. And I believe it's inevitable that global marketplace for services will evolve that's going to be on a similar sort of size and scale to an eBay or an Amazon. We're talking 70 billion, 200 billion market cap companies. So that's where we are. We're the leader in terms of users and projects and, and so forth. And um, it's a long way to go. All the hard work starts now, but um, it's good to be an Australian company in, in this particular space. It is. And congratulations. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Matt.